Welcome to episode 22 of your favorite family podcast, Raising the Revival Generation. And actually, it just dawned on me that we have a lot of students who listen to this podcast. We do. Yes, we do, because they tell us. They're yeah. Like, they're like, uh, my, I made my mom subscribe to your podcast. <laughs> That's true. So I can listen. And then we have students who just subscribe to it on their own, and they know who they are. They do. But that's also part of the reason why we do this podcast. Yeah. Because, because we're, it's, it's not just about future. Right. It's about now. Now. It's about doing the things you need to do right now to get the Word of God living and active in your kid's life and in your life because you can't give what you don't have. Right. But that's good news because the Bible says that His mercies are new every morning. That, so that today, if you're listening to this and you're second guessing, well, how do I do soul winning? How do I do evangelism? How do I get my family into the Word? His mercy is new today and you can actually start applying it. That's but right. before we get too preachy, you have some announcements? Yeah. If you don't know us, we are Raising the Revival Generation. You can find out more about us at RevivalGenerationMinistries.com. Can I do something real fast? Sure. Who is it? It's oh, hello, Pastor Sam. It's You're on the podcast. <laughs> it's Crazy Pastor hello. Sam. Hello, Revival Generation. There you go. Look at that. And Pastor Crystal. Uh, I told you we would have him on. <laughs> what episode is this? 22. 22. Oh, that's going to be incredible. This is going to be the best episode ever. Amen. Just so you know, we're going to be talking about Preston. That's it. Hey, did you see? This is take two, and I got distracted because I saw the ring show up on the emoji show up on my Twitter feed, and I got distracted. And then we had to stop and re record. That's incredible. <laughs> I, I'm so excited for him. What a Amen. week. Amen. And uh, he'll, he'll be up to New Hampshire soon, too. So Good. I'm excited about that. Is that an official announcement? <laughs> yes, that is an official announcement. Great. So stay uh, tuned. Keep, keep following. Raising the Revival Generation to get the dates, because we'll put the dates there first. Sure. Yes, we will. Wow. Awesome. Ooh. That'll be it. And it, Raising the Revival Generation exclusive. Ooh. Oh. Exclusive. And we need to get all our friends from Canada to come down. Absolutely. I mean, if you're within 10 hours and have an opportunity to hear Bandwell's Preston Shuttlesworth, it's worth the drive. Well, while I have you on the phone, I was, I'll share a testimony that we were going to share anyways, and that's that we had a student who broke his hand who broke his arm during the summer, and you know who he is, yeah. and he was in a cast, and then they took the cast off and they put it down to like a, um, a, brace. a, like a brace, and so on Sunday yes. night when Preston was preaching, he, and he asked everybody to come up for healing, this student went forward because he couldn't move his wrist like he was supposed to be he able to like his other pain. one, and he was having pain, and uh, Wednesday he told us that when Preston prayed for him, immediately the pain was gone and he could move his wrist. Oh no, we lost Crazy you there? Sam. He didn't get to hear the rest oh, of the testimony. Oh, come on. What a, he left on a cliffhanger. Uh, we left him on the cliffhanger. Well, there you go. There's, he'll probably call back. But anyways, you were saying house cleaning stuff. So now we just gave you a <laughs> testimony that, that God uh, healed a student of ours. Yeah. And uh, so that's what you get when you tune into the Raising Rev Revival Generation. We have seven kids. You never know what's going to happen in our home, and you never know what's going to happen on the show. <laughs> so you were saying... About the podcast, you're giving them general information. Yeah, and, and congratulations, so Preston, if you're listening. You can find out more about us at RevivalGenerationMinistries.com. Uh, there's more about who we are and what we're doing. There's more about the speaking side, the speaking engagements. If that's something that you're interested in, you can go ahead and fill out just the booking information. And um, just so you know, we will bring the entire family because we are all about bringing our children along with us. And of course, we have a traveling ministry. We have a traveling Even ministry. Even with music. Even with yeah, music. Yeah, we have a we're beautiful like little family. worship team being built up here. Um, but uh, yeah, so and then of course, you know, go ahead whatever platform you're listening to this on or watching this on give us a follow a thumbs up a like a heart a share a, heart. a review a comment whatever it is that you feel the Lord leading you to do go ahead and do it and um, speaking of if you would like to sew into this ministry you can do so we're on cash app the link will be below and uh, if you want to partner with us and partner with what God is doing because we are believing big things for this ministry that we have been called to and uh, we are proclaiming in faith that we are the number one Christian parenting podcast out there you know when we were talking oh, oh, high five, <laughs> high five. High five. go team uh, actually that's so our daughter uh, 
just got engaged yes, this weekend. Yes, our daughter got engaged A lot of big Sunday things this night. weekend. We have yeah. stories from this weekend for you guys. Uh, one of them was the healing, yeah. which you heard, which we tried to share with Pastor Sam on the phone. <laughs> um, hopefully that comes through on the podcast. Uh, but um, our daughter got engaged. Yes. And I was sitting downstairs with her fiance, Josh, who has been on the podcast. He has. And, uh, and I was, they were asking me some advice because for marriage counseling. Yes. And I said, you guys got to be unified. Amen. You have to be a team. Mm -hmm. You got to be the team. You got to be a team inside and out. So I said, go to our website, <laughs> buy the same shirt and put it on like a uniform to show the unity <laughs> that you are have on the inside. That you're, you're, it's an example of it. That's the official merch announcement. And Jason has a shirt. And Not this one. He was supposed to wear it and he didn't. And actually, this is our second time recording this episode or trying and to I didn't change today. My shirt. And he didn't even get changed. So I'm not really sure what that's about. Um, but yeah, if you are interested in a Revival Generation merch, we have it. And actually, we, my favorite is the one that he was going to wear is a shirt. And it says, has, has anyone ever told you? And that is the very beginning to the soul script that we use when we go out, uh, yep. um, as our friend Nelson says, souling or soul souling. winning, souling, souling, like trolling, yeah. souling. Yeah. And uh, anyway, but it opens up an opportunity for conversation because somebody will read your shirt and say, has anyone ever told you what? And then you can say, oh, that God loves you and has a wonderful plan for your life. And uh, anyway, so we're excited about that. But we also have coffee mugs. Coffee. So, and tumblers. And if you are interested in a coffee mug or a tum tumbler, uh, go ahead and join our group because we are running giveaways all the time. Uh, you can find that at uh, Revival Generation, no, sorry, Raising the Revival Generation Fellowship on Facebook. And I think that's it for announcements. Yeah, you did say the website, right? I did. Revival okay. Generation, nope, yes. Revival Generation Ministries dot com. Dot com. There you go. There it is. So there you go. That's all the <laughs> housekeeping stuff. And you want to know what? Want to know what I was thinking? Like when we were talking, just even then, is that last week when I was preaching to the youth, something clicked on me. Is that, is that this generation, this generation that they have, is the most biblical, illiterate generation. They are. That's right. That the world has seen. Yep. And that came from a secular source. Yep. That this generation, and actually that same source is, is, is saying that the people who are the most successful like by, by substantial amounts are those who go to church. Yes. And not just any religion. It actually says a Christian church. Those are the ones who are the most successful in marriage, in jobs, and just in life in general, which mm -hmm. I thought was amazing because it's not a Christian uh, organization that's no. putting that out. It's just, telling, it's just giving you statistics. Yeah. And when that, when that dawned on me, because, because we live in such a biblical, illiterate time, the Bible says my people perish for lack of knowledge mm. so they don't know you don't know the promises of God you don't right. know the word of God so you're susceptible to the lies and the attacks of the enemy and so a lot of our ministry is any ministry is preaching the truth yes right Jesus said that when the when the Holy Spirit comes so we, we our desire is to get our kids on fire with the Holy Spirit Amen. and give them a passion for the word because the Bible says that when Jesus is talking to the disciples he says I'm gonna send the helper the Holy Spirit he's gonna guide you in all truth and then Jesus later on in the next chapter when he's praying for the people says he says, "You're sanctify them in truth. Your word is truth. Mm, amen. And so they have everything they need for life and godliness right, right there. And it's just getting them in tune to that thing. Right. And, and so because this generation is so biblically illiterate, right, they're, sub they're susceptible, if I get that word out, to the attacks. But they're hungry. Well, that's the other thing we found. They're so, hungry. So because they're so deprived of, of nutrition and yeah. life and, and the good news of Jesus Christ, it is good news. So if you're preaching anything other than good news, you got it wrong. It's in the title, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Gospel is good news. Right. If you're going around beating people over the head, it's not good. <laughs> that's not good. Yeah. But the good news is, is Jesus came for sinners, just like Paul said, which I am the chief of them, mm -hmm. but he even showed his mercy to me so he can do it for anybody. And the kids, I mean, they're, they're wandering around looking for the one that their soul longs for. Yeah. They're looking for the one who created them. They're looking for purpose. They're looking for identity. They're yep. looking for love. They're looking for all. And so it's such a hungry generation. And that is why we believe that this is an incredible revival generation that, that, we, are, that we are speaking into, that we are growing, and that we are believing is going to bring revival to to our nation to our to our world because god's not finished don't go hiding in any bunkers because yeah. god is not finished and there is work to be done and the laborers are coming and and just so you know and th this was a revelation in our life a couple years ago when we came to the church where we're at you know i always says pray for the pray for the laborers right because the harvest is is ready and uh but you might be a laborer in fact you are a laborer 
So that means get working, get going, get sharing, get don't don't stay where you are, don't be stuck, get moving, get you know, get plugged into your churches, get um, get investing into families and children and uh, your own friends children. and your neighborhood and your community yeah. and your city, right? Get investing into that because you are li quite literally a laborer that God is sending to and, your and community. It, and it takes people who say like, it's, who come to the conclusion, like that say like, the, um, the people perish without lack, for, with lack of knowledge, right? But it takes people and parents who are in grandparents and just people who are on fire for Jesus Christ to say like, well, this generation is not going to perish because right. I'm going to do my part right. to bring forth the gospel, bring forth um, the knowledge of the truth of God's word, and I'm going to preach it, to, whether it's to one or to a million. Right. It takes those sort of people who, who take that, and, and if you're a parent, that that needs to become a reality, especially with the kids around you. That's right. Amen. That you don't want. I don't want my kids to perish. So they're gonna have. They're not gonna lack in the knowledge of who God is. Right. And not just our kids. Our kids' friends. Those yes. Kids that, that we have relationships. Yeah. Right. I mean, think of. We just came. Uh, we have family visiting. We just came from a playground, and we walked to that playground, and we knew three, four kids immediately there. And uh, granted, we live in a smaller community. We live in a rural com community. But I was impacted by that in knowing how many kids that this year that we see at that playground, that park, that know us, know who we are, know where we are, know where to find us, yeah. and that, that we can invest into. And I, I just thought that that was like a really and, cool and moment. And they creepily stand behind you. And while you're talking to somebody, then you turn around, you're like, oh, 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 they're they're like hey, how are you like, doing? They're like, do you like, remember me? They like, they like stare at you with smiles on their faces. Like, oh my goodness, what is yeah, going on? Yeah, exactly. Which literally happened to me. And I was like, <laughs> I turned around and there she was. I was like, whoa, hello. Um, but yeah, but, but, <laughs> but yeah, it, it, it takes people who are going to be those ones who stand. Um, right. And it's funny that, because that's what, that's, we're going to transition into the stories from this weekend. But as we talk about that, like people. Gen people who stand up for the generation mm. and lead their generation. There's right. there's Moses, right? Moses right. led the people. He led them for his generation from the Exodus to the Promised Land. Right. And then, but he didn't stop there. Right. He passed the baton on to Joshua. Joshua yeah. Right. And so and so you have these people who raise up in their generations, and those are the ones you read about in the Bible. Right. The ones who make a difference are the ones who say, "I'm not going to do the things of this world, but I'm going to yeah. stand up." Right. And I'm going to be the one who is God uses because God's always looking for a William vessel. Yeah. Right. We, we talked about that kind of last week. Mm. The, the Bible says the eyes of the Lord are roaming to and fro. He's searching. looking all around. Right. He's searching for someone whose heart is completely devoted for, to right. him. Why? So that he can show himself strong on their behalf. That's right. And, uh, and so it's, it's understanding that. And so, uh, so it, it's my people perish for lack of knowledge. But our ministry, I was just thinking about this, our ministry to our family, but even to the kids in general that we get in off the street is to not, is to give them the knowledge. Right. But the cool thing about that too is what I was telling them last night, is that in this room, as we continue to preach the gospel, as they continue to do things, that are the next Billy Grahams. That's right. Amen. Because it's not a doom and gloom mentality yes. when you start seeing that. Right. You start seeing like, no, Don't God's raising, God's raising up right. gen a generation because they're so they're so dry that when the Holy Spirit hits them, it's a flood. That's right. It just comes mm -hmm. washing through. And so then they start doing the things of God. And especially another thing I realized is, is how you view the end times affects how you minister. Hmm. Right? Jesus says, behold, I'm coming soon. Soon. And then the, the, the apostles, uh, John and John, he says, he says the Antichrist spirit's already in the world. Yeah. We can see it. Yep. So like it, it's, it's this building. And then you have the fulfillment of prophecy with Israel becoming a nation, right. which had to happen. Which and that happened in May in everything. 1948. So like biblical prophecy is getting fulfilled. The, 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 the Israelite people, the Jews are moving back to the nation. In fact, yes. for the first time ever, there's more Jews in, in Israel than there are in the U.S. Right. Like those things are building and it's getting closer right. and closer and closer to the end times. But that's when the God says, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Yeah. So like as we're moving closer to that time, there should be an outbreak yeah. of revival. There should be an overflow of the spirit that starts pouring up. So when I'm ministering last night to these kids, it clicks on my head. Yeah. I said, I, I need, it's not about, it's not about um, just preaching that God can deliver you from depression, anxiety, self-esteem, uh, issues, uh, suicide. It's preaching that God, that you are a workmanship in his hands created for good works. Amen. So not only does he do the work in you, he does the work through you. Yeah. That you become the one who's anointed to break the yoke of right. slavery, right. to sin. Amen. 
And, uh, and it just clicked on me last night when I was preaching them, and I started speaking that over them. Yeah. I was like, you get enough words of garbage spoken over your life, I'm going to pronounce blessing yeah. and, and, and prosperity and the word of God over your life. Well, it's funny because even the week, my kids are sitting there, by the, the way. The two weeks before that I've taught in our children's ministry, it's been a very similar vein. It's And, I, and this past Sunday, even like saying over them is that, is that at some point, and some point soon, because it doesn't, they don't have to wait, right? Because we talk about this all the time. There's no junior Holy Spirit, right? They they have God's spirit now. They can move it now, right? But, but, but the desire is, you know, they walk up, they're like, oh, you're sick. You have cancer. Let me pray for you. Healed, you know, like healing and walking in that anointing and 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 doing that. That even at that young age, that that can happen. And that we're leading them to that. We're bringing them to that. We're we're living life as we talk about all the time in overflow in our own life and pouring it out onto our children and our students and our ministry so that they can go and that they yeah. can walk in it. Yeah. And so, uh, actually, I, I, I skipped what I was originally going to say at the beginning, but I'm, it came back to me now. Is that when we were talking about my people perish for lack of knowledge. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so last week, I felt impressed by the Lord uh, to invite the students up so that we could lay hands and on them, them and anoint yeah. them, and and uh, and and pray that pray that they would receive the gift of faith and the Holy Spirit to guide them. And and when I did that, there was a student there that we prayed for and we anointed. And he yeah. and uh, and my people perished for lack of knowledge. His word is truth, right? That's right. And then all of a sudden, that week, that student starts starts getting into his Bible, and but not he's always gotten into his Bible. Yeah. But now he starts posting stuff That's right. on Facebook, and it's like powerful Holy Spirit stuff. And recognizing stuff. things, because one of the things that he recognized— Well, that was the other thing I was going to say, yeah. Yeah, he was at a concert, and he just—he recognized, like, oh, this is spiritual. It's there, a spirit of a, oppression. There's a spiritual oppression here, right? He's 15 years old, not raised in church, not raised with Christian parents, not raised in anything, right? And he, he's really plowing away for his family right now. And he's, he's in this thing, and he says, I have the Holy Actually, Spirit— he knows the Holy Spirit. He knows his voice, and he's recognizing this is not God's spirit. This is not good. What, what's interesting about that too is that everything in the physical realm sets him up so that he should not be where he is spiritually. Right. Yeah, that's right. Just if you knew his life, if you knew the fit, like everything that's happening in this in his situation, he shouldn't be on fire for that's God. Right. He shouldn't be trying to win souls for the Lord. He shouldn't be going to concerts and saying, you know what? There's a spirit of oppression here. Right. Um, but he is because God has called him. God has anointed him. That's right. And he, he actually listens to this podcast. He's one of the students that listens because it's not about he, – he's soaking in as much as he can yeah. because he wants, he wants to flow in the things of God. And in and, and our tenure of ministry, in our very long – we have a lot of longevity in, in youth ministry. We have very rarely ever seen that. In fact, there's really – We've seen him on fire for a period We've of time. We've seen him, and, and, and I get, there's really only one student that we can think of that you know has really kept with it and kept with that on, on fireness and into her adulthood. And, and, and I mean, we've seen other things. Well, too, I, I should include our own kid in that. Uh, but, you know, but the but, hunger, but what, what I was saying is that is what's happening is we're actually seeing it more and more now. So what used to be rare is now often. Well, I was going to say, you made it sound like we have a failing ministry. No, 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 no. That's <laughs> like, not That's what I mean. not the case. That's not, it's the we, hunger. We, it's the, it's the I'm sorry. Yeah, it's, it's, let me, re let me yeah. rephrase that. It's not, it's the, it's the hunger and the desire. It's that sometimes. Hey, have us come speak at your church. We've never done anything in ministry. We've been a failure. <laughs> no, no, no. That's not what I mean. <laughs> Thank I you mean, for like, us. sometimes you have to get them to this point of being hungry, but, but these students have a hunger already. Yeah. Like sometimes you have to teach yeah. them to be hungry before they can even be hungry for the things of God. Like you have to kind of go before them with and, that. And, but these guys, like they're already hungry oh, and yeah. that makes it that much easier to then pour in and invest and, into their well, we lives. Have, we have, well, so in, we have students who serve in ministry now. Yes. And, and, um, and that fire got rekindled. Yeah. Actually Amen. very recently. And yeah. it's actually been really cool to see when you pour your life into some, when you pour out your life, like a drink offering as Paul says, mm. That, and then you see them grab it and they get it and they start yeah. doing things. It's, there's an excitement that starts burning in you. But when they start doing it while they're still 13, 14, yes. 15, then it's like right. even more. Because a lot of the times what ends up happening, just youth pastoring 101. You come in and you pour yourself out and you give them everything you got. And I was telling Bethany this just the other day. I preach as if there's a million students listening to me, even if there's only 10. Yep. Because I only got an hour with them. And that's the hour I get to give them the word of God, the spirit of truth, and I just pour it out. I give it everything I have. Yeah. I get excited. Mm -hmm. I'm animated. Uh, if you you probably find videos of me preaching, and it's like this guy's a lunatic, <laughs> but I, I I because I'm I'm passionate. Yeah. 
and I only get that moment with them. And then they go home and they go to school and all the brokenness, all the music, mm -hmm. all the YouTube, all the Snapchats, all those different things that we're telling, that we warn you about, they go right back to. Yeah. But when they catch it. Catch it. All the, it's, it's God's it's spirit at work in their yeah. life. And he starts removing those things. Right. And then right. they get even more on fire. Yeah. And then, and then they start, they start getting in, uh, they walk in anointing. Yeah. That's right. And they start praying for people. I told Brett. I said his name. I told Brandon last night. I try not to use names too much, but he listens. Like you he listens. Do. He listens. He likes the shout outs. I he try probably not to it's use probably the just name. put a smile it probably just put a smile on his face. He's like, They said my name on my <laughs> pocket. But I told him last He's night. I, said, be walking in, I told him Yeah, I told him as he would, as he continues to do the things of God, mm -hmm. as he continues to walk, as he continues to soul win, because this kid soul wins. Yeah. That God, he's gonna start seeing the miraculous right. flow Amen. through him. Yeah. Because the spirit of the Lord is on him. Mm hmm and uh, and and that's what it's about, right? Mm -hmm. That's that, that's why we you trade a child up like that. That's He's right. not our child, but he is our child spiritually. Yep. I, like he told us, he, he told us on the ride back. Yeah. He said, "I guess you guys are my spiritual parents." I said, "He was the only kid that ever told me that, by the way." Yeah. And I said, "I guess we are." And uh, and when you start seeing it, it is that proud moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and it's it, and actually his love for the students around him too, and that he has a fire and. And it spills and, over. And he invests into them, too. And That's he's what I'm 15 saying. years That's... old. And you think about this, and now at 15, you know, where is he going to be at 25? And we, we look at our friend Evangelist Preston. He's 24. Yeah. He's doing big and mighty things. But our prayer is that Brandon will be double of that, more of that. You know, like that he'll do more and more, more than, than what we've ever will do, right? We want them to have more. We want Adeline and Lila and Asher and, and, and uh, our children you, and our students. The, the goal is to get them to get it at yeah. a younger age, and what right? I, to right. get them on fire at the Samuel age in in, in First Samuel, where they're where they're young, yeah, and they hear God calling to them and talking to them. And when I'm teaching in our kids ministry, one of the things that I've said recently, the past couple times I've ta I've taught and I've felt in my spirit is that I what I pray over them is that that in that room alone, when I've got those those kids, that that we'll see millions of souls from that. That they'll they'll go out and it'll just be masses because the end times it is, and we're not an end times podcast. We're not gonna try to change your views on it but it is rapidly getting here right it is rapidly getting here that's well, that's why we call this raising the revival generation not re not raising a revival yeah, generation yeah because what is because what does it say um in in acts chapter 2 mm -hmm. right uh, in Joel in Joel when yeah. when he's when Paul uh, Peter quotes at, at Joel in acts chapter 2 he says in the last days i yeah. will pour out my spirit right. on all flesh yep and that's that's what we're. That was the kickoff. And that's what's happening with so these the, kids. So the first major event was the cross and the resurrection. Amen. And Jesus is ascending. He says, "Behold, I'm coming back. Mm -hmm. I'm coming back." And the right. angels say that don't don't be looking up in the sky sad. He's like, you have a mission to go impact the right. world, and Jesus is going to come back again the same way you saw him go up. He's coming back. And so it's it's understand that 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 uh, it we try to push it off like we we don't have a we don't have a really great sense of time when it's like the the immediate return of right. Christ right but but it's 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 coming and God is Amen. moving things and God is shifting things and God is doing things in people's lives and so that this next generation isn't going to be just a, a bunch of bums yeah and at least not at least the people who are pouring into them believe so i believe so you believe so preston says that right. he's he's not preston evangelist Preston Shellsworth, if you don't know who he is, look him up, go to his website, get him in your church. He's he's a radical a radical man of God um, who the preaches Preston episode. No, actually I just I told them I would get to his story, but I didn't. I oh. told I talked about Brandon instead. Okay. Maybe you can book Brandon to come to your church. Hey, that's but anyways, okay. uh, <laughs> but but Evangelist Preston, his thing was like, I'm not gonna let my generation perish that's without right. me doing anything. Amen. That's like right. I can't do that. And it's the same with uh, Josh and Lexi, you know, our our almost son-in-law, you it's know, the, it's the prophet That's I, right. Jeremiah who says, "I have a fire quenched up in my bones, and I cannot keep it shut in anymore. That's right. It has to Amen. go out." And and uh, and to do that, like for us, right? I, I was just thinking of this: we can't be like Eli in the Book of Samuel, That's where right. we're just sitting on our fat, what? blessed assurance, <laughs> and then just letting things happen. That's right. Well, the world is just going to happen. These things are going to happen. No, we need not. We can't be like that as an, as the generation before them. I don't think of myself old. No. But uh. But I, I ain't I, no spring chicken either. I think about that, and, and you see that a lot in Christian community. 
communities, you see a lot of people going, well, we're just going to go move to the middle of nowhere and we're going to live off the land and we're going to have our house churches with three people in it. And, you know, we're, that's all we need. And no, like if anything, I feel like Christians should be moving towards the metropolitan areas. We should be going the to where the people are and preaching the gospels and building the big churches and doing it and getting the people because it's about people. Well, it's about people. It's not about like surviving until Jesus comes back. That's that's not that's not the church Jesus wants to come back to. It's a glorious church. He wants to come back to a glory, an active, a vibrant, and moving church of people not a beat up who bride. are actively pursuing Him and working towards Him and and putting in the work because there is work to be done. We we can't just be like, well, I know Jesus, I have Jesus, I love Jesus. I'm that's good. It. Good luck that's with it. the rest. Yeah, of you. have fun. I'm gonna close the well, doors. Because... Nobody come in. That's that, not it. But that misses the heart of the gospel. That's right. right. If, if you're going to quote John 3, 16, That's God right. so loved the world. And you can try to be like one of those crazy people who say, well, the world means the elect. Well, then... That's not true because it's in it, it's God so loved the world, the world. that which, which He That's created right. the cosmos like He loved it so much He sent Jesus Christ and why did Jesus come to seek and save the lost That's right and what and what does He what does Jesus do when He stands up at the feast He says anyone who's thirsty yeah and He's talking about spiritual thirst He says anyone who's thirsty guess what I'm the source you can come to me right. anyone who has a burden come lay it down and I will give you peace yeah. like those are the invitations it's it's all. And so God's heart is still for all. Right. But I, I want to take it from a, a global perspective and put it at our, our level. You got to start somewhere and you should start that's with right. your family. Amen. That's right. That's, that's the that's, immediate garden around that's you. That's the root. That's okay, well, this is take three. <laughs> we're not restarting though. No. We're just but we might jump have to in. cut a part out because we were given false information. So that's awkward. Uh, but anyway. Um, <laughs> Our computer ran out of space, so this is take three. The first time we had to cut it off because there was stuff in my shirt and I got distracted by a tweet, and then we were confused about the tweet, and then we were called and the tweet was confirmed, and then turns out I went investigating on Instagram while Jason was making space on the computer and um, not actually confirmed. So we're having, I don't know if that wasn't words, we're having um, editing to do and now we've got to get back into the flow of where we were which well, we're, is not always easy <laughs> well no we were talking about um about not being Eli that's right right so don't be so Eli was the priest in the time when Samuel was there right and and Hannah goes to the temple and she's praying to God asking God to bless her with a son yeah and uh, Eli misinterprets he has he has no discernment he, and so he, he goes he says to a Hannah, lot. he says don't be drunk like woman, it's it's early in the day. Why are you drunk? She's like not. She's like I'm not. I'm just I'm just so full of um, like sorrow that I I want this child. I want to be blessed. And she said, and he says, well then so be it unto you. Mm. And so she ends up having Samuel. But we said, the, don't be like him who just allows the church to function in some disorder. Don't allow your family to function in some disorderly right. way because right. your immediate ministry is your family. Right. Your immediate manly ministry is the people around you. It's, it's where God's called you. So if you don't have any kids but you're at work, guess what? That's your ministry. That's right. Because you're always, your first position before you're a doctor, before you're a teacher, before you're a lawyer, before you're anything, is that you're a child of God. That's right. And, th and that's the first position. That's your first identity. Before you're anything else, before you're a U.S. citizen, before you're a politician, you're a child of God. And so understanding that and then running your life in a way where you do ministry to those around you. Because as I said, like when I was talking to Brandon and I told, I told him that as you continue to do the ministry that God has called you to do, you will start seeing the signs and wonders. That's right. Because God says he pours out his spirit on what? All flesh. Yeah. That's, That's right. all inclusive. Right. That's the doctors. That's the lawyers. Start praying for people at your work. And, and, and I just want to, I just feel like, Led, if you don't know if your children are saved, it's time to present them with the gospel. Even the little guys, even the little ones, right? You know, if they if they can start understanding things and they and 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 you can start explaining it to them, and just start presenting it to them. If they're eight years old and you're struggling with behavior and you don't know why or whatever it is, start presenting the gospel to your kids. Don't wait and somehow guess. Well, I think they got saved. Well, I'm not and, sure. Or maybe they raised their hands at Sunday school or whatever. No, take 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 the 
responsibility in your hands and begin to share the gospel and teach the gospel with your children and be assured that your children know Jesus and are saved. And don't just use the, like you brought this up when we went and did our other recording, but we that one's deleted getting it. Deleted. But don't use the Bible as just behavior modification. Yeah, that's not. It's not to like it, get your kids not, not a, to lie. It's, yeah, it's not a rule book. It's, it's, it's actually a living word. It's, it's active, a living word. Right. It's living and active. And in you're not life. the Holy Spirit. As in like, does that make sense? As in like your, like the Holy Spirit will convict and the more that your children draw close to God, the more that they're, they're going to have uh, character development into godly yeah. character and whatever. So like the thing is, is that like using the Bible to develop character and behavior only works if your child knows Jesus. And it works if you're not a jerk. And yeah, <laughs> and if you, you know, know I mean. Jesus <laughs> and it's flowing out of your life, that is the only way it works because if you're using it to manipulate into behavior or your kid not to have sex or whatever, that's not going to work. Dude, your kid needs to know Jesus first. Yeah, that, that, like what I mean by not being a jerk is like oh, you, yeah. you, you stand there and you're like, oh, we need to love our neighbor as ourselves, and then you're belittling your kids or like cutting them down or, or like killing them. If, if you wouldn't say it to the pastor, then you probably shouldn't, or the pastor's kids, you probably shouldn't say it to your kids. Yeah, and nobody be mean to my kids. And I'm just saying that, like, like don't try to use the guise of, like, of well, I'm supposed to shepherd them or, or I'm their parent, so they need to respect me. Well, you're but, not Jesus. And that, that's the thing. You're not God. So, like, when your children sin, they, they sin to God. They might disobey you, but they're sinning towards God. And so it's your responsibility to lead them and teach them and guide them and train them. It's not your your responsibility to... But we we, we kind of talked about this on another podcast too. Is that is that God's your father, right? That's God right. is a, our heavenly father. And what happened when when we were in sin, right? Yes. He came and seeked and saved That's us, right. and he restored us, and he renewed us. He, yeah. he, and, and people will be like, well, in the end times, he was kind of harsh because we had this conversation with our daughter. Yeah. But but you're looking at hundreds of years of them killing kids and sleeping with prostitutes, and finally he gave them what they wanted. And the they wanted Old to Testament. worship Baal, right. as the Old Testament. They wanted to worship Baal. And they wanted an allegiance with Babylon. Right. God says, you get them both. You get to worship Baal in Babylon, and now you're in captivity. So you're under their, their authority. Welcome. That's what you desired. You right. got it. Right. And so it's understanding that is that like when, but God didn't end their story there. He says, you're going to be there for a little bit, but then I'm going to redeem you. Amen. And I'm going to send you back to the land. And then I'm, I'm going to ultimately redeem you when the Savior comes back again. That's right. Mm. Which is the fulfillment of Hosea. Right. But anyways. If you can't, if you, if you, the idea is with, with anybody is that you want to reflect Jesus to them. That's right. You, whether you're, whether you're ministering on the streets, ministering at your work, or ministering to your kids. Yeah. Right? When, when, when Jesus encounters the people in sin, right? The, the, when he's sitting at that table and the woman comes in and she starts washing his feet and she's weeping mm. and, uh, and they're, they're thinking in their mind, if he knew who she was. That's right. He wouldn't allow her to touch him because she is nasty. She's dirty. And Jesus says, those who are forgiven much, love much. Amen. That's right. And what it was, what he, he forgave her. That's right. The, the, the woman caught in adultery, right? And, and, and John. And everybody wants to stone her. Mm. And what does Jesus say? He says, you who don't have sin, cast the first stone. Yeah. The only one there who didn't have sin was Jesus. He was the only one who could pick up a stone yeah. and kill her because he had no sin. Right. And he looks at her. He says, woman, where's everybody that accused you? And he, and he says, neither do I condemn you. Right. But go and sin no more. Right. And, and so as parenting, it, I think this is important that we seek restoration. We seek, mm. we seek to renew. We seek to, re, to restore, restore them. Yeah. Not to cut them down. Right. Oh, you're, you just keep lying. You're always going to be a liar. Why do you keep lying? It's to restore them. It's to, right. it's to, it's to be that, that, that shepherd who guides them on the right path of righteousness. And part of that is because when God says it about himself, right, he says it's for my name's sake. It's mm -hmm. mean, it means it's my reputation. It's glory. Yeah. It's my reputation. And so as parents, if we're shepherds and we're, and we're following God's, it's our reputation. Right. Can you well, imagine if you're preaching and your kid stands up and says, this guy's a jerk. Well, but, <laughs> but see, and that's like where you see like on trends on like TikTok and like whatever, and you have the people who are deconstructing their faith and the ex, uh, evangelical Christian movement and that where they come out and basically it's just traumatic stories. It's parents who didn't really get it and kind of 
crush their kids in churches who didn't really get it and crush their kids and allowed things and and allowed things in God's house that should have never have been allowed in God's house and, and, and whatever. And now you have our generations, generation of, of kind of like really hurt people who want nothing to do with God because his reputation has been killed by parents and by church leaders. And, that, and that's really what it comes down to. Now, do they hold a responsibility of healing and all that? Yeah, of course, of course. You're At the end of the day, you're responsible for you. But but we are we do have to make sure that we're re representing Jesus well, especially to our kids, to our kids first, right? Not yeah. not our kids last, which is what we think about it a lot. You know, especially when you're in ministry, you got to look real good in ministry. You got to get everything together, or whatever. And your kids can oftentimes get swept under the rug or pushed aside rather than being in the forefront. But for us, we want it to be our kids first. We want to know that in our home that our children are getting the very best of us and getting the very best of God before we ever go out and minister to anybody else. And we haven't always done that. Yeah. And that and that's that's a thread in this, that's a vein in this podcast. We haven't always been there, but that's what we're working towards now. That that's what we want for our kids now so that they can see Jesus in us every single day, the right Jesus, that who who Jesus actually is. And yeah, and so like with this podcast, we started way out here. Yeah, and we kind of we we're honing it into to the act the to the practical of of the family. Well, revival starts in the home. Yeah, and exactly. So when you think of revival generation, and you think of raising that, I don't know why I have to keep hitting this microphone, but you think like revival. It starts in your home. It starts in your heart. It starts with you. It starts in your marriage. It starts in your children. And, before you go anywhere else. And the cool thing is, as a preacher who sometimes preaches in different locations, we have in the past. Like when I'm preaching, it's nice to know that I can take a, at least seven people who are spirit filled into a room Eight. because it, what? Eight now. We almost have a son-in-law. Yeah. <laughs> that are spirit filled and it makes the environment change. That's right. Amen. Because they're expecting God to show up. That's they're not, right. they're not, they're like, we're not just here for a, a speech right. or a debate. Right. Or some kind of just hearing opinions. They're, they're there to encounter the Lord. You know, I remember that. I remember last year where we were, um, we were in the, Early on in the midst of some revival meetings, God was really doing a lot. And we went to a different meeting and we walked in. And I remember the preacher, we, we actually couldn't even stay because we had an obligation to be somewhere else. We just kind of were hoping to slip in and slip out, but there, was, there wasn't a whole lot of people there. So, so we, we walk in and we sit there and the, the preacher, he just kept honing in on the family and saying like, oh, wow, you guys, the joy is all over you. The anointing is all over you. It's all over you. And they were talking to our 12-year-old. They were talking to, well, she was 11, our 11-year-old and our 21-year-old and, and our 13-year-old like, at the like, time. He was like, it's so good to see young people, but we had a prior engagement. Yeah, and they were so like, so we had to get up and leave. Bye. While he was we're like, like, we love he, you. It, it, <laughs> and they was like, it's not against you. We just big had a world prior. with like 10 people in it. And we we're like, oh my God goodness if we had known we wouldn't have come but anyway but, but they recognized it and they it thought horrible. we walked in we, crushed his we walked in and where our children had been at that they had been in the just soaking and the anointing day they were just yeah. there we walked in and they brought it with them and the preacher the the, the evangelist saw it and recognized it yeah and that and that was a really cool moment it was a cool moment i was just sad that we had to leave when he was we in the felt so bad, and yeah. he hasn't come back. Since. We even told him. We said, "We said, please don't set up any chairs for us. We have to go." Yeah, we and like, they're like, "No, we're gonna put you right in the middle so of the we're room." Like, oh, oh no. no, man! So we did the whole thing that you do is like you send one or two kids out to the bathroom, <laughs> and then one or two go after that, and then you wait five minutes, then one more it goes, so and then we leave the bad. one person sitting there by themselves, oh, and then we're like, so we're bad. trying to get them to I had come, to but the babies yeah. out first. Oh yeah, my it, goodness! It was, so we felt terrible. Pray. But now I know if someone starts doing that to me, I know what they're doing. It's like, hey. Like, <laughs> just go. It's yeah, fine. It's okay. Just, just go. I understand. Um, I've been there. Been there. Done that. But, uh, but under, yeah, that, that's true. That, like, revival starts in the home. Like, okay. like, the revival starts because what's under attack, right? Families. We talked about this with the Christian Worldview kind of podcast. Is that, like, I, I, and I did look up statistics because we were going to come back to it, but we never did. It's, it's like when, when a dad and a family unit is together, even if he's a bad dad. Yeah. It means that there's going to be a 70% chance, more likely chance that that kid's going to graduate high school. That's insane. And, and get this, the statistics are that high too when it comes to being a rapist, being a murderer, joining a yeah. gang, getting into drug addiction. It's all that high as long as the father's just in the home. Right. Not even if he's good. The enemy knows what he's doing. He knows He knows if you separate the parents, if you take uh, and, and you 
have parents away from their children all day long and you have somebody else raising them. It's a, it, that, that's strategy. There's a strategy there. Yeah. And what we need to do is as the church, as the people who follow Jesus, we need to combat that strategy and say, uh-uh, like we're not doing that. Bring the children into the godly education and the, and the education. And we always say we're not a homeschooling podcast, but uh, get your kids out of the public school. I mean, we just have to be blunt with it. Don't send them. Yeah. Don't send them to the public school. Find a way. Make a way. I guarantee you that there is a homeschool mom out there that you know and love who will homeschool your children. I guarantee it. Because it's a passion. Because it's a passion. And, and, and because it, in fact, don't... almost every homeschool mama I have ever met, including my own, is like overly passionate. <laughs> like over, like I mean, like it's like it's like I'll take your kids. Like, what yeah, you, I mean, I, I just can't, met I, you. What do you I mean? Can't say that. I'll <laughs> take, take your kids. That's fine. That's like that. That I mean that. Not to reveal Lexi's story, but that's a big part of how Lexi ended up with us. And but that, that I mean, that's that's besides. But that's the also how Lexi ended up in college. Yeah. <laughs> so like it was so a like, success. Yeah. So like you know, it just get your kids out of there. But we have to have strategy. We can't just raise kids and expect like, well, I bring them to church, so like they probably know Jesus. Like and expect that somehow it's all gonna fall into place. No, you have to work. You have to put in strategy. You have to plan. You have to be persistent. You can't get tired. You can't grow weary. You have to be filled and overflowing and all so the time. This leads me into another thought that I have that we keep saying even to our kids, and our kids are, are getting it really well, but also to our students. Mm -hmm. Is, and I'm going to say it to you guys because it, it took us a while. Believe the word of God. That's right. Believe, Believe what it word. says. Believe the word of God. Trust his word. His word yeah. is truth. Right. His word is light. His word is life. Right? Trust the word. You trust it enough with your salvation. Trust it to work in your life and in your kid's life. Right. Trust yeah. enough to, like, I was thinking this. One of the things I started doing is when I get up is I read a psalm, but I read a psalm where it says something about me. Because then I start quoting the psalm. I'm blessed. Right. I, God hears me. God's with me. God goes before me. There's nothing that even though the mountains shake, God is my refuge. He's my fortress. He's my ever-present help in times of need. Then I start quoting God's names. God, you're my Jehovah Jireh. You're the God who provides. You're Jehovah Rapha, the right. God who brings me my who gives me healing. You're the Lord, my healer. You're Jehovah Nissi, the Lord, my banner, my refuge, my strong tower. And I now you don't probably know those names. But I had a book I had to read for college that said all the names. But you start, you, you, you remember who God is and right. you remember who you are in Christ. You know that's part of the gospel that we yeah, don't ever get? That's right. Is that there's a transformation that happens in the life of the believer from what they were, which is sin, yeah. death, that dirt in the worm mentality, right. under wrath. And then all of a sudden you become a new creation in Christ. And guess what? Not only are you just a new creation, it says this. You were bought and paid for with a price. You have the spirit of adoption. Yeah. We don't just cry out to old deity in heaven. We say, God, my father. Right, right. And, and believe the word. Believe what it speaks about you. Believe what right. it speaks about and your for, children. And for the love of everything, be cautious on what you speak and what you speak over your children. Yeah. I mean, that matters. That's important. If you sit there and you say, well, I don't think he's ever going to really know Jesus. I don't think he's ever going to really get it. I don't think, like, no, of course he's not. Of course not. Because our words and, like, what we know in God's word, words have meaning words yeah. have power they, literally our entire existence was made from us one spoken word and right and so it has power there's authority when we speak things over so begin careful to speak. bethany i'm getting into the word of faith i know well but, yeah, subject. But, <laughs> but actually if the bible says with, with your mouth you confess what's in your heart that's right that's right you confess what you believe you confess what you believe so if you believe the word of god you're going to start confessing the word of god here's one that i did last night with the teens psalm 91 mm -hmm. right it, it begins with this it says the one who lives under the protection of the most high there's a position that you need to Amen. live in That's right. if you're going to experience the things that he's going to go on with right. he says and jesus says it too he says if you abide in me you will bear much fruit well, so there's a position that we as believers as parents need to be in and, and pastors or whatever you are, as believers, we're called to be connected to that source of life. We need to be in that place. He says, if you abide, if you take residence here, you will experience this. Well, I think about it, it's, it's similar to what I said with the, to the kids about the woman with the issue of blood. And I read them that scripture. And it's that like she, she didn't even have a relationship with Jesus. She didn't even know him yet. She only knew of him. She only knew what he was doing. And she said, if I could just get there, if I could just touch his robe, yeah. I know I'll be healed. Right. So how, and I, what I told the kids, how much more so when you are a child of God and you're a co-heir of Christ, that you can boldly go into his throne room and make your request known to him. How yeah. much more of that? Well, the Bible actually says that. He says, 
in Hebrews. He literally yeah. said you can boldly enter through Jesus right. Christ in your time of need. And, yeah. But how many times in our time of need do we turn to like a self-help book? We turn to Oprah, Dr. Oh, Phil, God's some other Phil. crazy, maybe, maybe you were a Jerry Springer guy in your time of need. I don't know, whatever it is. But we turn to all these different thoughts and opinions. But it says, Poor no, people. Poor you people have access to God Almighty, yeah. which he says. He says, those who live uh, under the protection of the Most High dwell in the shadow of the Almighty. Okay. And then the writer says this, I will say concerning the Lord who is my refuge, my fortress, my God in whom Amen. I trust. I've tasted it. I've seen it. And this right. is what I've come to know is true. I'm going to tell you that he will rescue you. That's right. Why do I know that? Because he rescued me. How do I know God's going to provide for you? Because he provided for me. Right. I've tasted and I've seen that the word of God is true. And that's what we need to do for our kids. Mm -hmm. But you need to taste and see that the Lord is good. You need to have that first part. Those who dwell or live in the protection of the Most High, that's your position. That's right. You're, you're stationed there. Right. I'm not moving out of this. And how do I, how do I know uh, if I'm in that place, if I'm connected to Jesus? Jesus says this. He says, those who, those who love me will keep my commands. Mm. You're in that position of walking in obedience to God's and word. Abiding. Yeah, you're, you're in that place. And you tie that to Deuteronomy 28. When you walk in obedience, guess what? There's a natural thing that happens in the spiritual yep. that affects the physical, and that's that blessing will overtake your life. Yep. I'm not out there looking for blessing. Blessings out there looking for me. It's a natural repercussion of walking in obedience right. to God's Amen. word. Amen. And total obedience. I'm not saying like if, if you're doing like this half-hearted thing, yeah. like I need to tithing for instance because mm. this is a sore subject for some so I don't have the money to tithe that's because you're living with a poverty spirit and your your foot is in the worldly system yeah but when you start giving to God what is God's he says right. see that I won't rebuke the devourer guess right. what your bills are gonna start deleting your credit debt it might start deleting your your kids will have to go to the hospital less I don't know maybe your dog won't get hit by a car who knows what it is huh. but all the but he says he will rebuke the devourer Meaning that the, the, the harvest isn't going to be eaten by locusts. Right. And secondly, that he's going to open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing. Well, and the other thing is, and, and what we go back to, I think it was in the beginning of this, maybe it was in the deleted portion, is that like we, we have these false teachings sometimes that like, let, that like somehow we're not supposed to ask for blessing. We're not supposed to look for yeah. blessing. We're not supposed to want to be blessed. We're like we're supposed to be just And we pray, up. we pray, Lord, let your will be done. Let your will be done. Let your will be done. Like, well, but God's Jesus, will is to bless you. And that's the, Brandon brought that up. He said, I can look at Jesus and he says, I can see that Jesus says, I only do the will of the Father. Right. And Jesus goes around, he, goes, he offers salvation, healing, healing, restoration. He's opening blind blessing. eyes. So, he's, yeah. so Brandon, in his mind, says, if Jesus is doing the will of the Father, then I need to do the will of the Father. And that's what's gonna, what I'm going right. to do. I'm going to follow in the footsteps of Jesus. And I'm only going to do what Jesus does. That's right. Yeah. And so, so we, like, it's, it's just this mindset of, like, oh, I can't, I can't ask for blessing. Well, that's oh, I shouldn't be blessed. Like, okay, well, Coca-Cola is making a blessing off of you every time you buy a Diet Coke. So, like, why can they be blessed and not you? And that's, not, that's just financial. It's not even everything else. Well, the other idea too is that is that with it, like when Jesus had a lot of favor, mm -hmm. Jesus had he, he had a lot of favor, and his people flocked to him, people loved him, yeah. people followed him around. If you look Just about to touch his garment, if you think about having thousands of people sit on a, we we factored it out that 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 the number of people who sat on the mountain and Jesus fed were greater than the than the town we yeah, live in, huge, and greater than the town yes, next to us. That's right. But, but the idea that, that we can walk in blessing and, 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 and experience it because it's one of God's principles. That's right. And in fact, he begins that. He, 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 that's the whole law. Like if you walk in obedience, you're going to be blessed. If you abide in me and you keep my commands, you will have a life that bears much fruit. That's right. But apart from me, you can do nothing. Right. And it's understand that. So the, the, the psalm says, like, I've tasted and I've seen. He will rescue you. He will cover you. He will protect you. He says, you won't fear. Because you know who God is and you're walking in the shadow of who God is. Now, if we grasp that and we put that in our kid and we instill that in our kids' life or the next generation or the people around us, then it starts spreading like wildfire. That's right. And yeah. you become the one who God displays his glory through. Because that's what it says in, in uh, Isaiah chapter 60, arise and shine for mm. the light has come. Because and the glory, the glory of the Lord glory. shines upon you. Amen. The glory of the Lord shines upon you. And then it goes on to say, and the world is getting darker and the people are in really deep darkness, but the glory of the Lord is on you yeah, to right. shine bright in this world. And what glory means, it's position and presence, it's majesty, it's wealth. It's, it, think about this. I was thinking this too when I was reading that word glory. And the glory of the Lord fills the temple. Was well, the temple just a shanty, mm -hmm. a shack? Right. Where does God's presence dwell? Right. 
Amen. It dwells in a church that he's building. It's a life. It's our lives. And our lives are not just junk. We're not dirt. God's spirit's inside of me. I'm nothing less right. than a tabernacle of the Holy Spirit. Right. And therefore, my life is going to be just like the temple, just like the tabernacle, and just like the ark. It's going to be something that is beautiful. Yeah. Because God's spirit's inside of me. He's going to remove all the garbage yeah. and make it Amen. make it beautiful. Yeah, and 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 I would say, you know, God he his will actually is for you to be blessed. That's why it talks about it so much in passage after passage after passage, scripture after scripture after scripture. He wants you to be blessed. That is his will. That's he wants you to be free. He wants you to be healed. He doesn't want you to be sick. He doesn't want you to be broken. He wants you to be restored. He wants it all. That's good. That is literally I, God's will. I think the challenge is to go and read Psalm 91 yeah. and just like read it out loud and just Soak speak it. it. Soak yeah. it in because it goes on. The writer says he's going to make it so you don't fear. He says pestilence won't reach you. A thousand will fall. A thousand may fall at your right, 10,000 on your left. But guess what? You're untouchable because mm -hmm. God is the one who gathered you up and has you. He's your protection. And then he says, because you have made the Lord the most high, your dwelling place, where are you? You're in Christ. Oh, Don't sorry. step outside of that. Don't step outside of the covering because then you're not going to be in Christ. You'll yeah. be in whatever is out there, in the darkness. He says, because you've done that, no harm will come to you. No plague will come near your tent. For he will give his angels orders concerning you. Receive that. Say, God, thank you that your angels protect me because I dwell in the shadow of the That's Most right. High. You are my protection. Amen. Then he says, they will support you with their hands. You won't strike your foot against the stone. You will tread on lions and cobras and trample young lions and serpents. That's crazy to me. But then he goes, he says, because God responds. Amen. And he says this. He says, because he has set his heart on me. Yeah. Right. See, God takes notice of that. That's right. He and does. so, so first, the writer's getting excited. He says, be, "He's like, he's like, see, I've tasted and I've seen. This is what God will do for you. And because you responded and you did what I said, God responds and says, because mm -hmm. you listened to my word and you, you, were, obeyed. you obeyed. I didn't yep. get to this part last night, which I really wanted to. He says, because you said it on me. God's speaking to the people now. Right. He says this, I will deliver you. Yeah. Hallelujah. I will. Yeah. I will protect him because he knows my name. He right. knows who I am. Right. I'm not just some other deity. I am Jehovah. Right. Jireh. Amen. I am El Shaddai, the right. God of more than enough. I am Yahweh, the covenant-keeping God. He says, he knows my name. I will protect him. And when he calls to me, this is really cool. He says, I'm going to answer. Mm. This is God speaking. He says, I will be with him in trouble. Are you in trouble? Guess what? There's the solution right there. Right there. And he says this, I will rescue him and what? Give him honor. That sounds like a blessing. Give him honor, and I will satisfy him mm. with long life and show him my salvation, and that's where it ends. Amen. What an amazing psalm that God, God promises for those who live in him and walk in his ways. He says, I'm going to hear you. I'm going to see you. I'm going to save you. I'm going to satisfy you, and I'm going to honor you. Amen. I mean, he's going to bless our lives. That's, right. that's an I was just, I didn't get halfway through what I wanted to get through last night because I was getting so excited when I was preaching to those kids. And it was clicking on and it. And you go my, over our time limit Yeah, I every do. Week. And then I pray for them. And... But imagine if people started living like that. Right. And walking it. And then imparting it to their children. Yeah. So don't just trust God set for your salvation when you die. Yeah. That's right. Walk in his ways Start now living. and see it. Yeah. Well, see it in your life and then see it in your kid's life. As you follow him, you get the promises of God. Oh, wait. No, that's not the one I was going to read. Well, that's living, what I said, though. Living it, it's a quote yeah, from me. But she also wrote down, living is more than breathing. It's more than just existing. Right? Live in Jesus now. Yeah. Walk in it. Yeah. Walk in it. It's not just to go through this life mundane and, and, and like, how can God be glorified when we're all depressed and sad? It says the goodness of and the Lord leads to bunkers. repentance. It says that God's a good father. Yeah. It's like all, it's like if you, if you earthly fathers who don't, who are, who are, who have sin, know how to give good gifts to your kids, how much more your heavenly father. Amen. Like he's a good God. That's, he sets that up in his word. He says to Israel, he says, you tell the world I'm a burden to you. That's right. He says, I'm not a burden. In fact, I take your burden. Right. I'm good. I provide for you. Right. And, and so it's understanding that it, mm. when I talk about believing God's word, I'm talking about believing who God is. Right. Because he reveals himself well, he through his word. Is. Right? Yeah. He, Hebrews 11.6. It says those who, uh, those who are going to draw near to God are first going to believe that he exists. exists. And what's the second part? I don't like it when you test me. Oh, sorry. Things. And you did this to the kids last night. That's okay. And that he's a rewarder for those who, who pursue him. Yeah. That those are the two things, that he exists, that he's the God of the Bible, and he's the God who says he is. 
And then the second one is that he's a rewarder of those who are going to pursue him, that there's a pursuit of the things of God. And when someone's in the shadow of something, where are they? They're behind they're walking it. Right behind yeah, them. they're walking. Yeah. My kids walk in my shadow right. when I'm leading them. Right. And it's understanding that. And that's and so the the goal is that it trickles down, right? That's right. So it's not well, just that's the overflow. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. as a parent, you're leading them in the right. direction of where you're going. That's right. So if you think remember that old chart of evolution where it, yeah. it starts it starts down here with the monkey and it gets to a man. Yeah. That's what we do. That's it's it. God here, we're here. Our kids are here, and then one day our grandkids are going to be here, and they're all progression as you move in that same direction as we move towards it. Yeah. yeah, I'm looking more and more like them. Exactly. You're right. Yep. yep. And so do you have any other thoughts? No. Nope. Any other opinions? I think you said it all. Oh, okay. We have Brandon's outside. Oh, yeah, we have a student who's, come, who's waiting to come. Did you give him the code to come in? No. <gasps> we left him outside in the heat? All right, we should close this up because poor Brandon is suffering outside. And, and so uh, the challenge for you guys as parents is to read this verse. Yeah. Uh, read that Psalm, what is it again? Did I tell you? 91. Nine, yes, you're right. Psalm 91. And I would encourage you, and it's the same thing that I've been try encouraging our students this summer, is uh, if you haven't shared the gospel, if you've never led anyone to Christ, or you can only think of like maybe a, a handful or whatever, we want to challenge you this summer right, summer of 2023, or whenever it is that you're listening to, to do it, to go out and share the gospel once. We have these amazing soul winning scripts. You can find these. We have a link of soul winning resources. Uh, it'll be linked below this episode at the Jesus Project. Um, these are free. They're available to you. We'll even send somebody to come and train you or train your ministry, train, train your church. We won't, not individually. I mean, we can work with you, but uh, <laughs> we won't come just to train one person. We're not going to show up at your house and be like, hey, we're but here we with our But we will come kids. and train your church, and you can book us to speak right at the same time. And uh, come and, and learn how to become soul winners and start doing it with you and then bring your kids so, with you. And I guarantee, I guarantee you your kids will pass you in soul winning. Amen. I and so, it. can I give a quick testimony on soul winning? Amen. Go for it. Okay. <laughs> Getting excited, you said amen. I was like, oh. <laughs> but uh, when when we started doing the soul winning thing, I was in my office and a and a, a guy came and said, "Hey, can I park in your parking lot? I'm gonna go hand out tracks." <laughs> and uh, and he, I said, "Yeah, go ahead." And I was sitting there doing schoolwork, and I felt God say, "You're gonna let him." This happened to me twice actually. <laughs> he said, "You're gonna let him go out and do do uh, hand out tracks, and you're not gonna go with him." And I felt conviction. I said, God, I'm not going to let anybody love you more than me. And so uh, I got up and I told Beth, I said, I'm going to go catch up with him. And it was the worst, the worst evangelism I've ever done. He just handing a track and saying, here you go. Have a good day. Here you go. Have a good day. I felt like, I don't know what I felt like, a Jehovah Witness or something where they go around and do the tracks. Maybe that's the Mormons. Someone does the tracks. And, uh, and I was just like, this is terrible. And so then I was like, well, let's try doing soul winning or evangelism. And we did it on Tuesdays or Thursdays. We picked a day and we went out and we were terrible. I mean, I mean, it was like, I mean, one person put a $20 bill in the Gospel of John, handed it to somebody, say, hey, read this. And you can keep the money. <laughs> it was so bad. We were so nervous. And then we go down to Tampa. for a pa I mean, We're pastors, by the way, just so you know. I can preach the Gospel to many people in a room and call them up for an altar call. But when it comes to one-on-one -on -one conversations, I like, I'm like, God loves you. Um, but so I, 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 uh, we go to Tampa and I find, can I have that? We find that I, we're walking in and we see this at a, it says soul winning and no one's at the table. And there's two of these scripts, the gospel soul winning script. And I take it and I, I, I think I might've stole them. I don't know. I asked for, for forgiveness since, and I've actually been licensed under the ministry, so I think they forgive me. <laughs> but uh, I grabbed them. I said, Pastor Sam, he was with me. A lot of my adventures contained Pastor Sam or my family. And I was like, look at this. And he reads it, and he's like, this is awesome. And he, he, he pocketed it. <laughs> and, uh, Our own and pastor. So, so we go out to eat for lunch at that, it was a minister's conference, and then we go to, we're going to Ross's to buy shoes. That has to be a Manny That's because thing. Manny, That's needed, Manny I guarantee Manny, Manny Ross needed shoes. shoes. So anyways, we're going to Ross's to buy shoes, and Pastor Sam sees a guy outside uh, selling candy bars to raise money for to, to get a place to stay or something. Uh, and so he goes over and he starts doing the soul winning script, and he just reads it. Because this is just a tool, by the way. Yeah. It has all this. The gospel is You'll effective. find though people hate the script. They the, hate when you talk about it. It's the gospel that has the power unto That's salvation. Right. Right. Just so you know, it's not you. 
It's not, it's not, uh, it's not anything. It's the gospel is the power for, for That's salvation. Right. That's why Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel because it's the power uh, for salvation right. for the Jew first and then for the Gentile, Romans 1, 16. Uh, and so he just reads, he says, has anyone ever told you that God loves you and has a wonderful plan for your life? The guy says, uh, either, most of the time they'll say, yes, I've heard that or no, no, I haven't heard that in a while. Or my grandma used to tell me that. That's a big one. My grandma told me that. She told yeah. me she prays for me. Right. And then that's when you say, well, I'm the answer to your grandma's prayer. <laughs> but then, don't say that. But you go wow. on, you say, I have a real quick, question, quick but important question for you. If you were to die this very second, do you know for sure, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that you would go to heaven? And if they say yes, you say, you ask them why. How do they know? How do you know? Because you want to make sure that they can articulate the and, gospel. And some of them be like, well, I'm a good person, yeah. or I hope so. I hope so. Or, or my, my mom used to go to church, or something weird right. like that. And if they say no... Sometimes they'll say, no, I believe I'm going to be incarnated as a, a cat or something weird that like that. that. And then yeah. you proceed with the script, no matter what they say. Which is just says, let me quickly share with you what the Holy Bible reads. It reads, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. There's this part of the gospel message, sin. And for the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. And the Bible also reads, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And you're a whosoever, right? Of course you are. We all are. And then you flip it over. And on the back, it says, I'm going to say a quick prayer for you. Uh, Lord, bless, blah, 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 their name, and his or her family with long, healthy lives. And then this is important. Jesus, make yourself real to them and yeah. do a quick work in their heart. The Holy Spirit. There you go. If your hand's on them, you're anointed and you're praying for them. And so whatever demonic spirit was trying to block it just said, oh, no. Yeah. Oh, no. We're in trouble now. And actually, uh, Pastor Sam had a... At a they'll start a, fidgeting. Yeah, they'll start fidgeting, or a car will come by and start honking its horn, or their so friend... There'll be some sort of form of distraction. It always happens. There'll be some friend who they've never seen in the last 50 years of their life will just come rolling onto the scene and be like, Hey, Bob, I haven't seen you in forever. Keep going. Don't yeah, stop. Don't the stop. enemy is trying to steal, kill, and destroy. You have the power of, of the Holy Spirit upon you. You have the anointing. So do a real quick in his or her heart. And uh, if they have not received Jesus Christ... As their Savior, as their Lord and Savior, I pray they will do it now. Amen. And then you ask them, you say, if you would like to receive the gift that God has for you today, then say this after me with your heart and your lips out loud. And don't ask them if they would. Say, if you would. And then you say, dear Jesus, dear Lord Jesus. And what you'll find is people will say, dear Lord Jesus, because they really want that salvation. Yeah. They really want to, they really want Sometimes they say, dear Lord Jesus, oh, I can't do this. Yeah, actually, there was a Muslim guy who yeah. did that with Pastor Sam. And Pastor Sam was like, too late, you just did. And he's like, <laughs> oh, so he continued with the prayer anyways because he really wanted salvation. Yeah, but, amen. But uh, so Pastor Sam, goes through this, Pastor Sam goes through this whole script with that guy. That's what I read the whole script to you. you it's easy. Sure it's did. simple. It's training right now. This is training 101. Um, and the guy gives his life to Jesus. It's a baby. And then we go into Ross's. Yep. And I'm standing there, and God says it again. He says, are you going to let Pastor Sam... Win this man to the Lord, and you're not going to do anything. Mm. And I said, I got to go outside. And I went, and I found his friend. Hmm. And I said, I said, has anybody ever told you that God loves you and has a wonderful plan for your life? And that day, I can tell you, for the years, for the weeks and months that we did bad evangelism, two souls came to know Jesus in, in, in a minute. Right. And since that day, this is the really cool thing. We've used this script, and we go out once, once a week, and sometimes to special events, and we've seen over 8,000 people pray Amen. that prayer and give their life to Jesus Amen. Christ. From Dunkin' Donuts drive throughs to just walking in Walmarts. Yeah. We've seen 8,000 people give their lives to, the, to Jesus Christ. Amen. And so I encourage you guys. I just wanted to share that testimony yeah. at the end. We want, we want to see. And we love testimonies. If, so you're if you have a testimony of healing. Yes. You want to, if you're, if you go out and soul win, oh my goodness, please share that testimony yes. with us. We want it. We will read it on air. If you want to be an anonymous, just send us a message on Facebook. Uh, but we want to know what God is doing. We want to hear what God is doing in your life, in your family's lives, in your kids' lives, in your grandmother's lives, and whoever's lives. We want to know the testimonies that is coming from this ministry. And you want to know what we didn't do was what we said we were going to do at the beginning. I don't remember. Which is tell the story about the guy broken down in his car. We'll get but to that's that for another. Way. That's another. That's for another episode. That's right. Amen. That it. All right. Well, go ahead and uh, do all the things. Follow us. Like us. Whatever. Subscribe. Uh, buy some merch. Ooh. You'll be sporting that. Has any? And hey. 
that shirt, I'm telling you, has anyone ever told you that will open up the door for conversation? That's why we made it. Yeah, they'll be like, has anybody ever told you me You will what? literally be a walking soul And spirit. then that's the entrance point. That's your entrance. Yes. That's Amen. It. There we go. That's right. We love you. All right. God loves you. And God bless you guys.